All right, here's solutions to problem 48 off the uh, GRE subject math practice test. So what I'm dealing with here is a directional derivative. So what this is asking is it's saying you have this function right here in three variables. How fast is this function moving at this point in this direction? Because how fast is it moving is kind of a strange concept. We can figure out how fast it's moving in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. But how fast is it moving in this direction here? Um, so this just specifies a direction. But since it's a vector, it has an, a magnitude to it as well. But really, all I want is a direction here, not a magnitude. So to account for that, to make my answer consistent for any vector pointing in this direction, I'm going to scale this and make it a unit vector. So if v, this vector here, is, and I'll write it in this form, 1, 2, 3, these coefficients here, uh, then I want to figure out the magnitude of this vector. And that's just the square root of the sum of the squares. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Uh, and that's easy enough. That's what, 14? So I get root 14. So instead of this vector, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to talk about this unit vector. I'll use u to represent it as 1 over root 14, 2 over root 14, and 3 over root 14. So the first problem that I kind of solved is they pointed me in this direction right here. But really, when I'm solving this problem, I want to not use this vector's magnitude. I just want to use this vector's direction. So I account for the magnitude uh, to, and scale it by its magnitude to get here. Uh, what I now have is a unit vector that points in this exact same direction. And now all I have to do is be able to change color here. Um, figure out, I mean, essentially what you're doing is you're figuring out how fast is this thing moving in the x direction. And then you'll multiply that by this number. And then in the y direction, multiply by this number. In the z direction, you multiply by this number. So really, all you're looking for are partial derivatives. So I want the partial of this function, I guess it's g in this case, with respect to x of my function. And then I want to multiply that by, do I have to write of x, y, z? You know what I mean there. I'm going to write it of x, y, z. And then I multiply that by, typically you use the letter A here to represent the first um, value in this vector. And then to that, you want to add uh, how much speed you get in the y direction. So of this function, x, y, z. Uh, and then I want to multiply that by B, this guy, and then C. So the partial with respect to z of this function, x, y, z, g of x, y, z, uh, times c. So really all I'm doing is taking the dot product of this unit vector and the vector made up of the partials, partial with respect to x, y, and z. So let's calculate those. What's the partial with respect to x? Well, come and stare up here and think about the y and the z's are just constants. So this is just 3 times some other number times x squared. You take the derivative of the derivative of x squared is just 2x, and then you leave the 3 in the y alone, you get 6y there. So I'd have 6y times a, a being 1 over root 14. Maybe I can write this more succinctly. So I get 6y divided by the square root of 14, the partial with respect to x times 1 over root 14. And then to that, I want to add the partial with respect to y, so now y is my only variable here. This is all a constant. Take the derivative of y, it's just equal to 1. Uh, so I get 3x squared uh, times 2. So instead of 3x squared, I can write it as 6x squared over root 14. And note that in either case, this is just a constant. So that just went away. Uh, until I get the partial with respect to z, which this is all just a constant, so its derivative is 0. Uh, the derivative of this term, well, z is my variable, and the derivative of the variable is just 1. So I just get 3 divided by the square root of 14. So this right here is an expression that gives me the directional derivative at any point, but I don't want it at any point. I want it at this point, 0, 0, pi. So what I want to do is change all my x's into zeros, all my y's into zeros, and all my z's, which I don't see any z's here, into pi's. So I get 0 plus 0 plus 3 over the square root of 14. So my answer is 3 over the square root of 14. I'd love to see a 3 over the square root of 14 here. But I don't see a 3 over the square root of 14 here, which is kind of a pain in the ass. I don't know why they did that. Um, 
but okay, fine. I mean, I guess you could just rationalize, whatever. Three over root 14 is my answer. But now I have to spend a little bit of extra time and come up with an approximation for three over root 14. Well, what do I know about root 14? Well, root 14 is between root 16 and root nine. So I know that three over root nine and three over root 16 um, are on different sides of three over root 14. And if you want to think about which way your inequality goes, you go for it, feel free. Uh, you can probably figure it out pretty quickly. So you can say that over here, the denominator is a larger number. So therefore this entire thing is a smaller number. So really my inequality should go this way. Um, but you don't even have to worry about all that. You don't have to do any of that work because once you figure out these values, you'll be able to see which way the inequalities go. Anyways, three over root nine. Root nine is three, three over three is one. Three over root 16. Well, root 16 is four, three over four is 0.75. So I'm looking for some number that's in between one and 0.75. That ain't it, that ain't it, that ain't it, that ain't it. I guess 0.8 is my answer. Um, so probably the easiest way to do it is to do something like that, get some sort of comparison. Um, I'm sure there's other ways you could do it. You could ballpark root 14, um, but I don't know. For the sake of a test going as fast as possible, what I would do is I would have written three over root nine, three over root 16. I wouldn't have bothered with the inequalities there. I would have calculated one and 0.75 and been like X is between those two. I don't care which way the inequalities go. It's between those two numbers. And this is the only answer that is. So that's my answer.